This morning, I did my last big half marathon workout, 10 miles with six to seven miles at half marathon race pace, wearing the New Balance Rebel V3. Now, it was soaking wet out there, and as you can see, these shoes got absolutely disgusting, and my feet just got soaked with water, and I was slipping and sliding everywhere because the rubber on these is average at best. So this inspired me to put together a list of the best waterproof running shoes out there for you all. Now, I'm thinking about this list, I look primarily for Gore-Tex shoes as those are going to be the best at keeping water out. I also incorporated some brands who develop their own water resistance technology and before you come at me in the comments, yes I know water resistant is not the same as a waterproof but for some of these categories like the Tempo shoe there aren't a ton of waterproof options so we went with the water resistant version. So as we get into those wet and wild, dark and windy winter months, I hope that some of these shoes here can help you maintain your aerobic base and tackle whatever that next goal is for you, whether it's a spring marathon or just up in your mileage. All right guys, before we get into it, I did want to mention the Running Shoe Matcher tool. If you haven't checked this out yet, go to runningshoematcher.com. This is a really cool tool we built. It's free, by the way, my wife told me to mention that. It's a free tool we built that matches you with the best running shoe for you based on your goals and preferences. So you can input what goal race you're training for, what you're looking for in your next shoe, if you want something soft or firm, if you want a daily trainer, a tempo shoe, or a race day shoe, and we will pair you with the best shoe for you. You can check it out now at runningshoematcher.com. I will also put the link in the description below. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, so first up, we have the New Balance 880 V13 Gore-Tex. Now, this is going to be the best traditional daily trainer. I talk a lot on this channel about the importance of having a rotation, of having different types of shoes, and also of having that firmer, lower to the ground, more traditional style running shoe. So if you have something in your rotation like the Nike Pegasus and want a companion to that for wet weather running, something that's gonna give you a simple, no frills ride, be a nice workhorse for those winter months, then the New Balance 880 V13 is a great option for that. It comes in at 160, but for that, you're gonna get that nice Gore-Tex lining on the upper. You're also gonna get a Vibram outsole, which is gonna help a ton with grip. This one has a 34 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 24 millimeter stack height in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. And they don't list the weight for the waterproof version, and we know a lot of these waterproof versions are gonna be a bit heavier due to that Gore-Tex material, but the standard version of this weighs 10.6 ounces. All right guys, next up we have the Hoka Clifton 9 Gore-Tex. Now this is going to be the best cushion daily trainer for those wet winter miles. And right off the bat, what I love about this shoe is that it's the only one on this list that's delivering us a Gore-Tex shoe that's not just plain black. So shout out to you Hoka, you always come with the great color designs. No different here, hitting us with a nice blue here for this Clifton 9 Gore-Tex. So this is gonna be a good option for a comfort oriented daily shoe. It's not gonna be the lightest or most nimble but it is gonna be a good option for any of those longer daily miles or just those days where you want a bit of a softer feel underfoot. Like the 880, this one also comes in at 160 versus 145 for that standard version. So you are gonna be paying a $15 price premium here. But for that, you are gonna be getting that nice Gore-Tex wrapping on the upper. All right guys, next up we have the Saucony Triumph 20 Run Shield, and this is going to be the best waterproof option for recovery miles. Now, if you just did a hard workout and the next day you have six to eight miles easy on the schedule and you just need to relax and cruise, the Triumph 20 is gonna be great for that. It's also a great option for a waterproof long run shoe. I did a ton of 16 mile long runs in the wet weather last winter in this guy. Now they are on to the Triumph 21, but they haven't released the run shield version yet and the 20 run shield is on sale for under $100 in a lot of places right now so it's a really good deal. This one has a Power Run Plus midsole foam in here. It's a bit different than those other shoes we just highlighted, which have standard EVA foams in the midsole. This one has a beaded TPU. It's a bit bouncier. It's a bit softer to me, at least, than the standard EVA, but it's gonna be nice and supportive for those longer runs. Now, when I say supportive, I mean it's gonna support your body weight because what it is not is stable. It's not gonna be the most stable option on this list. So if you do have stability needs, I would look elsewhere, potentially to that clip in, which is going to be a bit more of a stable neutral shoe. 
All right guys, next up we have the Pegasus Trail for Gore-Tex. Now the Peg Trail is Nike's road to trail hybrid shoe. They take the standard Pegasus, they beef it up a little bit with a brawnier outsole, they make a bit of design change to the upper, and for the Gore-Tex version, they also put this nice little booty around the ankle. So this is gonna be fully waterproof due to that Gore-Tex. It also looks great. This is one of the best designed waterproof shoes and best designed running shoes in general out there. You can often find this one on sale for about 130 to $140 and if you wait for the right sale you will be able to find this for under $100. Now this one weighs 10.4 ounces. It has a stack height of 31 millimeters in the heel and 21 millimeters in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. This is gonna be nice and cushioned. It's not gonna have the fastest feel, but in general, the Pegasus line is really nice and well-rounded with a great blend of soft and responsive. And while this is positioned as a road to trail shoe, this is also a great option just as a road shoe for wet weather. Uh, I know Kofuzi, shout out Kofuzi. He uses this as just a winter running shoe. I know he lives up in the Chicago area. I'm down in North Carolina, so I don't need a dedicated snowshoe. But if you are in an area where there's lots of snow and ice, you could check out the Trail 4 Gore-Tex as your road shoe for those cold, icy, snowy days. All right, guys, next up, we have the shoe that needs no introduction. It's the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, specifically the Run Shield Edition. Now, like the Saucony Triumph 20 Run Shield, this one is a water resistant membrane on the upper. It's not fully waterproof, but like with the Triumph, which I do have experience with, this one is gonna be decently protective in terms of keeping that water out of your shoes. Both of these shoes, I wouldn't go and run through a puddle or anything like that, but if you are running in a wet day and it's just that classic, the water splashes up onto the upper, these will keep your feet dry and they'll also do a 80 to 90% better job at keeping your feet dry than a non-waterproof or water-resistant running shoe. So the Endorphin Speed 3 has a full-length Power Run PB midsole, which is a really soft and bouncy PIVA compound. And there's also a plastic plate in there. So this is gonna be the best waterproof option out there for faster days and also for long runs if you're someone who wants a faster plated shoe for those long run efforts. Now in my research, I did not find a waterproof carbon fiber plated shoe. I don't believe any exist, at least for the roads. If you do know of a waterproof carbon fiber plated shoe, please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to pin it and highlight that but this will be the best option in terms of water protection if you're looking for a plated shoe. Now, I wanna talk about grip and outsole for a second here. Now, that first shoe that we highlighted in the top of the list, the 880, does have that Vibram outsole. These other ones just have those standard outsoles. The Hoka is going to be good to average, and the Saucony is probably gonna be average at best. So that's something I would keep in mind, right? The trade-off here with the Speed 3, because it doesn't have a huge covering of outsole rubber, unlike the Triumph, which just has a massive protective cover of rubber on there. The trade-off here is that you're going more for the speed and lightweight versus durability and grip. So I'll leave that up to you to decide. If you want something that's just gonna keep your feet a bit more dry for those faster days when you want a plated shoe, then the Endorphin Speed 3 Run Shield could be a good option. If on the other hand, you want something grippier, more performance oriented without having a protective upper, I would maybe look even to Puma's line, something like the Deviate Nitro 2 or even Adidas with the Takumi Sen. Those outsoles are going to be a lot grippier and a lot better on the wet weather than what we see in Saucony, even though their uppers aren't waterproof. All right, guys, next up, we have the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 Gore-Tex. Now, like I just mentioned, this has that awesome Puma Grip outsole, which is going to be one of the major draws here. And it also has that waterproof Gore-Tex upper. So if you're looking for a more simple, no frills shoe, no rocker, no plate or anything, this is a great choice. I also highlight this as the best gym shoe, running shoe hybrid that's waterproof. So if you're in a gym class that does a lot of running outside, or if you just want one shoe for that work at the gym and for running in wet weather, then the Velocity Nitro 2 Cortex could be good for that role. This is on the lighter side as well. They don't list the specs for the waterproof version, but the standard version is 8.8 .8 ounces. And the stack height here is moderate. It's got about 33 in the heel and 23 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. 
All right, guys, finally, I wanted to end with a waterproof trail running shoe. Or maybe you got a nice holiday trip coming up in December and you're gonna be doing some trail running out there in the mountains, then I would suggest the Hoka Speedgoat 5 Gore-Tex. Now, the Speedgoat alone is recognized as one of the best trail running shoes out there. It's very versatile, it's on the lighter side for a trail shoe, and it can handle the roads fairly well. It's got five millimeter lugs, so definitely most at home on the trail. And when it's out there, it can tackle everything from those ruddy mudded paths to roots and rocks and steep inclines. Now the Gore-Tex version builds on all that great stuff that the Spigo 5 is already delivering, adding that waterproof membrane to it. Again, shout out Hoka with the color design here. They went for a nice red instead of that standard drab black that we see across so many of these Gore-Tex shoes which is a nice touch. This one has a lower drop as well, coming in at four millimeters, which is great for some more traction and control on the trails. And it comes in at $170. All right, guys, so there you have it. Those are the best waterproof shoes for running in the wet and wild slick weather this winter. Hope this is helpful as the weather starts to ramp up here. Like I mentioned, I'm in North Carolina, so we'll see what we get. I mean, we can get snow maybe once or twice a winter. I usually go up to the mountains and we'll see some snow up there. So. If you do live in a snowy area, better prepare. Hopefully pick up a pair of one of these shoes to get you running out there nice and controlled and safe on the roads. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And I'll make sure to keep you up to date with the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.